Clap your hands and welcome Reverend Rory. Even when we don't know it, the Lord is working inside of us. Now, of course, we're tempted to be double-minded and not believe it, but it is absolutely true. Tonight, I'm going to give you the secret for how to be ultimately humble before God, to receive the maximum from God. And I've discussed this with more than 1,000 leaders of the church in 80 nations. And everyone I've discussed it with agreed with me. So can I ask you, how many of you would like to know for the rest of your life, what's the secret to living in union with the Lord, to live the most humble possible way before God, have maximum grace in your life? Could you stand up if you're wanting to have that tonight? Now, could you close your eyes, please? Because I'm going to prophesy to you. And even though there's a lot of people in the building, it's for you very personally. You ready? This is for everyone standing, everyone who would like to stand but has to sit for some reason. Here's what the Father in heaven is saying to us by his Spirit. There is only one way for you to abide in Christ. There is only one way for you to be Christ-like. There is only one way for you to be wise. There is only one way for you to be loving. There is only one way for you to receive healing. There is only one way to have answered prayer. There is only one way to know me. There's only one way to be ultimately humble. And the Lord says, this is how to do that. I want you to become experts. After you have gone to the cross with your own will and the will of other people for your life, after you've said, not my will but yours, Lord, I want you to present your body as a living sacrifice continuously, every day. Just as in the Old Testament that they daily had to have a daily offering at the temple. I want you to be so aware of how you walk in this life. And then there's only one thing you need to do at that, after that. It is learn to be a receiver. I want you to learn to receive being filled with the Holy Spirit continuously. When you're anxious and worried, I want you to learn how to turn to me, give it all to me, and then receive by faith being filled by the Spirit of God. I want you, when you meet people in wheelchairs, to not strive and struggle, to try to have enough faith to see miracles, Wait upon me to receive instructions what to do, to receive the faith, and the Spirit of God will do it. When you're in an unhappy marriage, and some of you are, when you have pain in your heart, some of you children in homes where there's not enough love, here's the answer, says the Lord. Turn to me to receive my love, my comfort, and then be the answer in your own home by spreading my love. But let it always be the overflow of me filling you. First, receive from me, says the Lord, then love your mother, love your father, love your brothers and sisters, love your husband, love your wife, Love your enemies. Love your friends. Please sit down. I want to repeat this three times. Thus says the Lord, the secret for the rest of your life to living really humbly is receiving the Holy Spirit continuously. I'll say it a third time. This is what the Lord says. 
If you shall know me, it can only be through receiving my work inside of you. Trusting this. Receiving by faith continuously my Holy Spirit's infilling. The Apostle Paul, he said, I have nothing except what I have received. You cannot do better than Paul. The Lord Yeshua said, I'm not saying my own words. I'm not doing my own works. What I have received from the Father, that I speak. That I do. Are you getting it tonight? This is the secret of a totally humble life. Receiving in the moment the Holy Spirit's help. Now let me speak to the children who are in pain tonight. Where you know mommy and daddy, they want to be great believers and Christians but they've disappointed you sometimes. They've hurt you. Thus says the Lord, I see you. I understand. Receive my healing now. Do you hear it? Receive my healing now. Now, in the name of Yeshua. I'm speaking now to the wives who have done their best to serve their husband and love them, but you're disappointed. You don't feel loved and paid attention to. My wife felt like that with me sometimes, even when I was trying to be a good husband. Right now, would you close your eyes, please, and just receive your healing in the name of Yeshua? I understand you says the Lord I feel your pain when Jesus died it was not only to forgive you but by his stripes receive your healing I'm speaking now to husbands. You have done your best, and yet you feel unloved. You feel like you're taken for granted. That's not everybody here, thank God, but there's some people sitting here. It's exactly like this. Here's what the Lord said. Don't look for your wife to change. Don't look for your children to change. It's time for you to exchange your disappointment for becoming more humble. And my son, receive from me, says the Lord, my love. You have sought love elsewhere than me. And that is idolatry fathers come to me says the Lord and I will make you oak trees of righteousness and when you are living as a receiver of God's love continuously your wife will love you more your children will respect you more your prayers will be answered more. Thus says the Lord, why are so many answered prayers so far away? Because I've been waiting for you to come to me, says the Lord, with your whole life with every problem, with everything, come, come and don't doubt anymore. 
and by faith receive. I heard your prayer, and I will answer it. You don't know when, and you don't need to. Trust me, says the Lord. Every prayer that has been prayed that is according to God's will will be answered. And you could think, but Lord, sometimes I've prayed and friends of mine have prayed and then they died anyway. And the Lord says, you don't see the big picture like I do. Trust me, says the Lord. Every question will be answered when Jesus comes back. Trust me that that's true, says the Lord. You know, some people don't receive the answer to prayer because the Lord's holding it out to them, but they haven't learned to receive it. We need to train to receive from God. We've heard many other reasons. Someone has sinned. They're not trusting God enough. God is testing them. But I'm telling you, the main reason why there's unanswered prayer is God is waiting for us to become expert at receiving His Holy Spirit continuously. And this you'll see in the Bible in five minutes from now from Jesus' own words. Excuse me that I say Yeshua's own words. Because He said, If you abide in me, continuously receiving the Holy Spirit, receiving the instructions from God, receiving wisdom from God, then you will ask what you will, and I will answer your prayer. And the Father will answer your prayer. You see, there's something God's waiting for. He's waiting for a life that's totally abandoned, where we are continuously receiving His joy, his peace, his love. I have very much pain in my own marriage. I've had such a wonderful wife. We had such a wonderful life together. We led a marriage ministry helping hundreds of couples get closer to the Lord. But something happened in her life. A wrong turn, a wrong choice that was used by the enemy. And she got a sickness that only 15 people in her home country in the history have ever had that ate up almost all of her lungs. And I wanted to pray for her for healing. I wanted to take her to the doctor and she refused. I was falsely accused of many things because she didn't get enough oxygen to her brain and she began to imagine terrible things. I know what it is to have rejection. I know what it is to be falsely accused even by the people I love. But I'm telling you the truth tonight as I was humbling myself and turning to the Lord to receive His peace, His joy. He has vindicated me with my children, with my wife, with the law, with all the false accusations, I'm standing here tonight at perfect peace, still waiting for the answer to my prayer for my marriage to be fully restored. Ten years I've been without the affection of a wife. Ten years without the intimacy of my life partner, who I have many children with. But let me tell you, I am happy. I'm at peace. I have joy because I'm like a little kid receiving the Holy Spirit's love every day. Thus says the Lord, every time you feel sad or alone, turn to me. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting to give to you. Because it's more blessed for me to give than to receive. I know you want to offer me hours of prayer and your fasting and your worship. And it's all precious to me. But the Lord says, learn to bless me by letting me give to you my spirit. 
that Jesus paid for on the cross. And as you overflow with my presence to people around you, you make me happiest, says the Lord. And then everything you do will be out of the overflow of an intimate, receiving relationship between you and me. How many of you understand this? Is there anyone who doesn't? I believe there's a couple of you that don't, so let me say it in a simpler way. Daddy God wants you to learn how to take hold of his love. And it doesn't mean you have to jump higher. We can't jump to the ceiling and stay there. Gravity will pull us down. But to learn to let God stoop down to where you are and fill you, that's the will of God. Paul said, I have nothing but what I've received. So when he was doing miracles and healings, and he didn't take it to himself. When people were worshiping God, he worshiped with them because he had nothing but what he had received. I can't raise anyone from the dead, but I've seen three people raised from the dead I've prayed for. And it was just receiving from God instruction what to do and putting my hands on them and then God did the work you see Yeshua said and let's put it up on the screen Matthew 5 16 let your light so shine the light that's created as you receive light from God let your light so shine before men so that they will see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let's look at John 15, 8. Hallelujah. Right before this, Yeshua said, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. How do we bear fruit? Thus says the Lord, Receive from me instructions, obey me, trust me, and I will do the work in other people's lives so you will begin to see people saved. People who already are believers, they'll become more committed or completely committed because of you ministering to them. Let's back up a few more verses. Go to John 15, verse 5. This is Yeshua talking to his disciples the last night before he's crucified. He knows he's going to be crucified. He told them that. He's going to be lifted up. He knows it. But he's talking to them about how to bear fruit. He's more concerned about them than himself. And he says, I am the vine, you're the branches. He who abides in me. And I'll tell you the Hebrew translation for that. The one who who lives receiving from me all the time, getting their life from me, cleaving to me, living in union with me, dependent upon me for everything. He who abides in me, I abide in him and her, and you will bear much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Let's go to the next verse. If anyone does not abide in me, now here's the bad news. If you don't learn how to receive from God continuously, if you don't live in union with Yeshua, you'll be cast out as a branch and withered. People who are gathered and they'll be thrown into the fire and burnt. This is not God's destiny for anyone in this room. But there are people who refuse God's grace refuse to receive the Holy Spirit, only live in their own will and their own power, and they suffer for it. Please don't be one of those, ever. And when you see people like that, please go rescue them. Does this make sense? I want to take you to one of the scariest verses in the whole Bible. But don't be scared, because the Lord will rescue us before this happens. Please go to 2 Peter chapter 3. We're actually going to read eight verses from verse 12 to 19. 
2 Peter 3, 12. Yes, we are looking and hastening the coming of the day of God. When the Lord comes, the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire. Peter says this three times in 2 Peter. It's not just a, like symbolic language, it's truth. I'll sing a song for you that I wrote during Christmas this year about the day of the Lord, which is like a thousand years. But let's read this. Not only will the heavens be dissolved, being on fire, the elements will melt with fervent heat. That's why we'll ha need a new earth and a new heaven. And we will be caught up by angels before that happens. That's what the rapture is about. We who are still on the earth, Let's go to the next verse, 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, we're looking for a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Now listen to me. How many of you know this Bible verse? The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So how do you stay filled with the kingdom of God? You stay filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you do, you have peace, joy, and you have what more? righteousness we're training now for the new heaven and the new earth is this too heavy for you or are you okay verse 14 this is the word of god therefore beloved looking forward to these things be diligent to be found in him to be found living as a receiver of his grace do you understand does it make sense it's not mystical it's reality. And when we're living at Him, in Him, with peace. And, you know, in the worship tonight, you had a song about this, about the living in this rest. Remember, sister? You were talking about this perfect rest uh, with God. The rest of faith where we, <sighs> we let go of all our worries and fears and striving and then we are found in peace in him do you know what tonight is tonight is shabbat shabbat shalom this is a day that began in in the bible it starts in the evening it goes to the next sundown this now we're in shabbat so tonight i'm not working i'm fellowshipping pleasure it's a pleasure and I usually am not in church on Friday nights I usually am just alone with God from Friday night to Saturday night resting sometimes with my family sometimes with friends but tonight I'm with one of my new best friends in life I'm with Elias and all of you <laughs> resting before the Lord in peace and when we are in holy fellowship like this, do you know what happens? We are cleansed from all our sins by just being honest and real and transparent and continuously humble to receive his spirit. Amen, brother? And this is how we get without spot and blameless. Let's look at verse 15. Now, consider... Let us all consider. This is Peter talking to us. It's not just me. Imagine a little smaller me, about the same age, but more of a fisherman than a businessman. Instead of from New York, like I grew up, he really grew up in Galilee. His name was Peter, Cephas. And he says, consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation. Many people say, Lord, you said you're coming back soon. Where are you? Why don't you come already? He is suffering, waiting. So not one person will get missed. Not one who will be part of God's kids, his family. I asked the pastor before the meeting, What's your absolute favorite thing to do on free time? 
in life. Can I tell it? He said, to just be with my grandchildren. And I said, yeah, me too. And God, for us, he loves every one of us. He doesn't want to miss out on one of these children. My youngest son, Aaron, I'm 68, he's 23. That's 45-year difference. He's both a son to me, but he feels almost like a grandson. You understand? He's such a joy to me. And after six kids, I'm so relaxed with him, you know. <laughs> the first kid, I was all trying to figure it all out. The second one. God is so relaxed with you. And he doesn't want to miss out on a moment of the special things in your life. It's the long-suffering of the Lord is salvation for many people, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you. One more verse, 16. As in all his epistles, so now he's talking about all of Paul's letters, because Peter was writing after Paul had already generated more than, uh, I think he had generated nine letters by then of the 13 of Paul in the New Testament including Hebrews, which is a completely different style than all the rest of them because it's just like me when I'm in the synagogue relating to other Jews. I speak differently than I do when I'm with non-Jewish people. Anyway, Paul is speaking of these things, some of which are hard to understand. And untaught and unstable people twist what Paul writes to their own destruction as they do the rest of the scriptures. You've surely met Christians who say, Quoting from Romans, I know what's right, but I don't have the power to do what's right. Woe unto me. How many of you have read that? And Christians say that. But that's not where Paul stops. He's saying that's his human condition. And he goes on in Romans 7 and 8, and he talks about, but when I'm receiving the Holy Spirit, I get power to overcome my flesh and temptations, and to live in victory with God, to be led by the Spirit, so that I'm not a slave anymore. I'm no longer a slave to fear or sin. I am a child of God. Now, I want you to back up. Let's go to Second Peter chapter 3. I want you to go to verse 6. We'll start with 5. This is talking about Noah's flood. Remember yesterday I told you about the covenant? So let's start with verse 5. For this people willfully forget that by the word of God, the heavens of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water, go ahead, verse 6, by which the world then existed was being flooded with water, verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, are preserved by the same word of God, reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of who? Ungodly. The godly will be caught up before this happens. That's what the rapture is about. And again, verse 8 that I started with before. And nine. But beloved, do not forget this one thing that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. And we'll go back to nine. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness. He's long suffering toward us. You see, we keep repeating that, Peter. He's patient with us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Do you understand why he hasn't come back yet? When people say he could come back tomorrow, they're deceived. He will not come back until everyone has had a chance to hear the gospel. That's what we've just read for the last 10 minutes. Listen, this is thus says the Lord. He will not come back until the gospel has been preached to all people, and then the end will come. It is written. Not my opinion, right, Pastor Elian? So let's do the job. This is not an ordinary church. You are called to be an apostolic church. It's not just a name. 
all over the planet, you are called to be people who will go out with your professions and also without, but going with the gospel to the unreached and reaching them. And the Lord says, I will do the work when the word is spoken. But I want you to live the happiest people in the United Arab Emirates and wherever you go. I want you to be filled with joy and peace and the power to do what's right, which is what righteousness is. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. How will they come to repentance if they don't hear? And again, verse 10 that we started with 20 minutes ago. 10, 11, and 12. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise. Do you see this theme again? The heavens will pass away. Three times we're reading this now. With a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Again, both the earth and the works that are in it will be burnt up. Verse 11. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be? Listen, Peter's talking at the end of his life. Please listen to our brother Peter. Didn't he know the Lord? Isn't this the absolute truth? What manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Verse 12. Looking for and hastening. You see, we hasten the coming of the Lord by doing his will, getting the gospel out to the planet. That's what he's waiting for. That's what he's waiting for. And when Jesus comes, my whole nation of Israel will get saved in one day. But my job until then is to go where God calls me to go through the nations of the world and in Israel to preach for the president and the prime minister and the government leaders and all the people of Israel. I do it through my art. I do it through the word. I'll be doing it through television in the future and satellite television. But God wants all of us to find out where does he want us to be and to be receivers of wisdom and grace and the Holy Spirit's empowering. Thus says the Lord, there is nothing that will ever happen to you except I'm there with you so you can receive my grace in the midst of every situation. The first time I was threatened to be murdered, I remember the peace that came over me. And they took a gun and they fired it. Nothing happened. I remember the next time someone tried to kill me, they had one of these harpoons that you use in Hawaii. It's like a big rubber band and a spear. And they were standing over me. Nothing happened. I'm, I'm here. And I could tell you many more stories. I just want to tell you, whatever happens, we belong to the Lord. Receive his grace. I remember one time I had a ministry house in Hawaii called the Lord's House. This is 44 <laughs> years ago, a long time ago, before some of you were born. And I had led to the Lord one guy who was on so much drugs. And there was a guy living downstairs who was a convicted murderer. And he had run from Alabama all the way to Hawaii. He had a phony name. He took the name Marcus Francis. And how do I know that? Because the Holy Spirit told me to go to the post office one time. And he said, go to the third pile of pictures. And the sixth picture... Because in the post office in America, you have pictures of all the criminals who are the most dangerous. So I went to the third pile of the sixth picture. Marcus Francis, alias Frank Marx, convicted murderer. He threatened to kill me too. He actually did kick me through windows, but I didn't even bleed. I don't know how that happened. And one time he got a hernia and he came all the way up the stairs. It took him about five, ten minutes. And he said, could I have some sugar? And I said, you can have more than sugar. Let me carry you. And he was as tall as I am. 
very big, strong black guy. He said, let me carry you into the bed and take care of you. I took care of him for two weeks. He did not get saved at that time, but he could never be my enemy in the same way again because I had received so much love for him and he had received an overflow from me of God's love. Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? Union with God, abiding in him, living as a receiver of his grace will cause you to be a person of love. I'll never forget when Marcus, before the, this, before he had the hernia, he, uh, he took one of these guys who had gotten saved named Stephen, who used to be on a lot of drugs, and he gave him drugs for free, and he started telling Stephen he needed to kill me and that that was God's will. And Stephen was standing outside of my door with what's called a 4 by 4 which is a 10 centimeters by 10 centimeter wood block that you build with. And he was a strong guy, shorter than me, but strong. And he was waiting for my head to come outside the door to take my head off my shoulder. And as I was on my way out to the door, a voice called me from inside my house, Rory, Rory. And I went in the house. There was no one there. So I was on my way out the door again. Same thing again. Rory, Rory. No one there. And then I start to understand it's an angel. So I went to the door again and I said, is someone out there? And Stephen, suddenly his mind cleared. I guess an angel touched him. And he said, I've been waiting to take your head off. Who was calling you? I said it was an angel. Well, that guy who was living downstairs, is this too much testimony or is it interesting? The guy living downstairs, Marcus Francis, the day after when it didn't work to kill me through this other guy, Stephen, he climbed in through the window of the kitchen and he had socks on his hands so there'd be no fingerprints. And he had a big knife. It was this big. You see? Like this. And he came at me. Big strong guy. Big knife. And I was only a year and a half old in the Lord. So when he came at me, and I have to tell you why, after I saw that picture in the post office, I called the police to tell them that there's a murderer living downstairs. But the police that I called was being paid off by Marcus. He was giving him girls and drugs. And Marcus came the next day to kill me. Do you understand? Yeah, this is a real story. And so Marcus came in through the kitchen window and he came at me with the knife. And I was so dry in my throat. And I was so scared. <laughs> and I was only a year and a half, two years old. And Lord, I'm going, in the name of Jesus, <laughs> I command you to, to back off, Marcus. You do not want to kill me. And Marcus's head went like this. <sighs> I mean, I was almost whispering because I was so dry in my throat. I was so scared. And he said, don't you call me no demon. No, I hadn't called him a demon. But you understand? The spirit that was in him, the murderous spirit that was in him, was what I was addressing. And then the second time, he came at me more forcefully. And now I had more courage because, hey, God was at work. So he came at me again the second time, and I said, in the name of Jesus, you may not hit me with that knife. And he, I'm telling you the absolute truth. I'm not exaggerating. For me, exaggerating is lying. I'm not allowed to lie in front of God and give false witness. His hand was shaking like this. Now I was really bold. And it's a good thing because I had backed up all the way into my closet. I had nowhere else to go. He came at me a third time. I said, in the name of Jesus, Yeshua, drop that knife and get out of here dropped the knife, and he ran out. Don't you think I became a little more bold after that? Don't you think I became a little more courageous, a little more trusting God? Thus says the Lord, whatever I allow in your life, it's for your good. Romans 8.28, let's look at it. Romans 8.28. Romans 8.28, and we know that all things work together for good. 
to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. And the next verse. For whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. For he, Jesus, is the firstborn among many brethren. You know, I'm one of Jesus' little brothers. So are you, and you, and you, and you. Sorry, you're not. You're one of his sisters. <laughs> Verse 30, moreover, whoever he predestined, that's all of us in this room, he's called us. You are called. Don't say, oh, I didn't receive my call yet. Yes, you are called. And whom he called, he has justified, just as if I'd never sinned. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. You don't have a glorified body yet, but in God's eyes and knowledge, there is a glorification that has started inside of you. You've read it yourself in 2 Corinthians 3. We're going from glory to glory, and when we get our glorified bodies, that's it. Then we are fully glorified. This is real. It's not just Jesus who's glorified. You and I. So here's the deal, guys and ladies. I walk around every day aware that I carry the kavod, the weight, of the glory in my life. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for you, who, who can stand against you? I want you to go to Romans 12, 1 and 2, and I want you to say la. Anybody know what that means besides pastor and his wife? And Sarita, I explained it to them yesterday. What you, in the book of Psalms it says Selah many times. Anybody know what it means? Oh wow, this is gonna change your Bible study so much. What does it mean? Louder. It's very almost exactly right. Thank you. Very good. It means pause, stop. Consider these things. Remember we just read that. Consider these things. Cons think about them. So let's slow down for a minute. Consider what we've talked about already tonight. Let's make some choices for eternity right now tonight. Can we close our eyes? Lord, we are Selah right now. We're pausing and considering the judgment of God that will come on the earth and your promise to rescue us. And we do want to be so godly without spot or ring. I ask the fear of God to come through each one of our bodies and minds right now. Holy, holy, holy respect for God, but no torturous fear like the devil gives. Safety. I pray for perfect safety and peace for all my brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord, that you've called us to be living sacrifices, continuously receiving your help. Selah, brothers and sisters. Think about this. Cows, they chew on the grass and then it goes down and comes up again. They chew it more. It goes down and they chew it more. That's what Selah means. Not just considering it in your mind. Really chew on what I'm telling you tonight. What's the secret to be truly humble? What's the secret to abide in God? What's the one word? Receive. Receive. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the fire of God by Receive the answer to your prayer now by faith, even though you don't see it yet. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, 
which is your reasonable service every day. Verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. How is it possible that we can know God's will? Could we go please to James 3.17? This was the homework from last night to tonight. I want to tell you another secret. You want to have another secret tonight? All right. Paul did something more, it's written in the Bible, than anyone else that lived when he lived. And I've tried to do that since I became a believer too. What do you think that is? Speaking in tongues. You know why? Every time you speak in tongues or sing in tongues, you have to receive first what it is you speak. It's the best preparation for being able to prophesy, to hear the Word of God, to get words of knowledge, to get faith, to get discernment of spirit. It keeps you in connection with God. James 3.18 and then I'll finish after this with just four more verses, four more passages, and three stories. Now, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. Listen, it's not sown in striving and shouting. It's sown in peace. When you sow into people's lives righteousness, it only bears fruit if it's sown with peace by those who make peace, with gentleness. Otherwise, you can say all the right things, but your children, your wife, your husband, other people won't listen if you're shouting, if you're angry. Everything we do, listen, this is a word from the Lord, must be done in the mode of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. In the sea. Let's speak in tongues, sing in tongues a little bit, okay? Endura moa si vike Ning Yulma Via Kinia Mandaya Ua La La Lande Sigutu Go back to James three seventeen. This is not only telling you about receiving wisdom from God. It's also telling how for you to live a lifestyle of wisdom from God. Okay? I'm saying now to all the sisters in this room, God is calling you to be pure, peaceful. I'm talking about toward your husband, toward your children, toward your co-workers. Don't shout at people when they make mistakes. Pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, like the Lord, and good fruits. What are the good fruits? Anybody remember Galatians 5, 22? Love, peace, joy, kindness, goodness, self-control. What else? Yes, patience, long-suffering. What else? You're very good. Without partiality. That means same for you, same for me. It's not just that when we're around the fancy people, we're nice. No. For the person on the street, too. In Israel, I always have to have change in my pocket because there's always beggars who are coming and they need money for their families for Friday nights to have Shabbat meal. I always try to have change or some small bills to give to everyone who asks. Because the Bible says give to everyone who asks. And finally, ladies, be without hypocrisy. Be completely 
the highest women of integrity. Let me speak to the men now. Guys, could you read that? This is a job description as a husband. This is a job description for a father. This is a job description for whatever job you have. I want you to be willing to yield when people interrupt you. Let them unless there's a time constraint and then go back to what you have to say. I want you to be full of mercy. God wants us to be full of good fruits. The most self-controlled, peaceful, gentle, kind, patient, loving, joyful, that we are without partiality, we are without hypocrisy. Turn to John 14. And Jesus said in verse 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you've known me, you would have known my Father also. But from now on, that's in our time now, you do know him. You have seen him. And then he talks about prayer, verse 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever believes in me, the works I do, you will do also, and even greater works will you do because I'm going to my Father. And because he goes to the Father, it means he's interceding on our behalf for the things we pray for and the things we're called to do. And he likes that we do even bigger stuff than he did, just like every father likes his children to do better than they did. And whatever you ask in my name, he's talking about if we live like this, in union with him, and then seeing miracles and healings. And when you're in the flow with God, then whatever you ask, you will receive. I'm telling you, these days, almost everything I ever pray, I get answers for almost immediately. But when I was a younger believer, it would be hit or miss. Because these days, I wait on the Lord for what to pray before I pray. If someone asks me to pray for them, I'll ask them to give me a little time to consider before the Lord what to pray. Do you understand what I mean? And it's so interesting when you're in the flow with God, there's just such another level of answered prayer. Does that make sense? Good. I'm saying this especially for someone in this room. They know who they are. <laughs> I love you, my sister. I hope this answered the question a little bit tonight, these different approaches. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Holy Spirit of truth abides with us forever. But we had to receive him. And you need to daily keep receiving and being refilled and refilled and refilled. I like to think of it like being filled like a fountain from inside till it's overflowing. How many of you have seen the fountain at Dubai Mall? There's a well of life inside of you with the Holy Spirit. And he wants rivers of living water to come through us. It's real. I used to not understand that until the Lord gave me the privilege to start planting churches and nations. And then what came out of me into another person's life, now it went into hundreds of lives in their country, sometimes thousands in Andhra Pradesh, 200,000. Hallelujah. <laughs> One more verse, and then we go to the song. I, I, I just love this verse. The Spirit, this is James again, chapter 4. The Spirit who dwells in us, He's jealous to have all of us, our full attention, because God resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. How will you be humble? Continuously receive from God the Holy Spirit. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. See, when Marcus ran away from me, it wasn't him running from me. It was the demon in him could not stand in my presence anymore. He fled. I used to have so many spiritual attacks. I remember when I was a young believer, I, 
sometimes I'd be attacked when I was sleeping and I'd be trying to say Jesus in my sleep and I couldn't get it out. I know what it is, spiritual warfare. I've been to the home of the biggest witch doctor in Uganda who was causing so much problems for so many of the pastors and leaders and evangelists I was ministering to. I went to his home. I bound up every demon in the name of Yeshua, every demonic power and principality working through that guy. That night, three of those brothers and sisters of the leaders saw Yeshua. And the power of God broke out in all their ministries. We are not powerless. We are bearers of the glory of God.